Welcome to Unit 10, School-Related Gender-Based Violence, Sexual Harassment and Trauma. By the end of this unit, you should be able to identify how gender-based violence might appear in a school setting. Describe how gender-based violence is manifested physically, psychologically, and sexually. Articulate causes and effects of gender-based violence on teaching and learning processes. Identify the role you have in responding to cases of gender-based violence in the school setting and articulate how you would respond. Identify specific impacts that conflict and emergency situations have on boys and girls and what role teachers and schools can play. Describe the symptoms of trauma and articulate how to address them. School-related gender-based violence, SRGBV, seriously undermines attempts to achieve gender equality in education and is a violation of human rights, which are recognized under both national and international laws. According to UN Women, more than 246 million children are subjected to gender-based violence in or around schools every year. SRGBV can significantly hinder students' learning, diminish their academic performance, and oftentimes force them to drop out due to trauma, fear, shame, humiliation, sexually transmitted infections, STI, such as HIV and AIDS, and or unwanted pregnancy. Take a moment to watch this brief video that defines SRGBV. School-related gender-based violence is defined as acts and threats of sexual, physical, or psychological violence occurring in and around schools and educational settings as a result of unequal gender norms, stereotypes, and power dynamics. It includes explicit threats or acts of physical violence, bullying, verbal or sexual harassment, non-consensual touching, sexual coercion, assault, and rape. It can also include corporal punishment and harsh discipline practices that are motivated by gender bias or other everyday practices that reinforce gender stereotypes and inequality that encourage unsafe environments. While males can also be harmed by GBV, girls and young women are disproportionately impacted. SRGBV is something most of us have seen in our own schools or experienced personally. In order for teachers to adequately prevent and address school-related incidents, it is important to understand the different forms and manifestations of gender-based violence. School-related gender-based violence can show up in several forms, physical, psychological, or sexual. While each category of violence has unique manifestations, there are certain acts of SRGBV that have elements of two or three forms of violence. Physical violence, for example, can come as physical attacks, physical fights, or corporal punishments, while bullying would be a cross between physical and psychological violence, unwanted sexual touching or rape would represent both physical and sexual violence. Verbal and emotional abuse from peers or teachers, a psychological form of SRGBV, can negatively impact a student's learning experience. Coercion, the act of forcing or manipulating someone to do something against their will, would constitute both sexual 
and psychological violence. Please take a moment to review the definitions, causes, and consequences of SRGBV found in your toolkit on page 99. To test your knowledge, please match the terms below with their appropriate definitions. While all people are responsible for their actions, there are systemic level factors that play a role in making GBV more likely. Understanding these factors allows us to be more aware of the central drivers of GBV. The drivers of GBV fall into four areas. Cultural drivers might include gender norms that favor men over women, early marriage, or tolerance of violence, and acts such as FGM. Legal drivers include legal definitions of rape and domestic abuse and legal status of women. Economic drivers include women's economic dependence on men and limited access to education and training for girls and women. Political drivers might be things such as domestic violence not being taken seriously. For examples of these drivers, can be found in your toolkit on page 100. Please take a moment to watch the following video that explores some of the impacts of SRGBV. The impacts of SRGBV can be widespread and as educators, it is essential we understand those impacts and the role we can play to help mitigate them. Please take a moment to read this case study of an educator from Kenya who shares her personal experience of being a victim of SRGBV, perpetrator of SRGBV, and with greater awareness and training, a change agent. After reading it, please consider the following questions and write your answers in the appropriate space. In what ways was Alice a victim? She was beaten by her father. She was ridiculed by her teachers as a stupid girl and received unwanted sexual advances from her teacher. This made her hide regularly in the lower form to avoid being in a situation again. In what ways was Alice a perpetrator? She used corporal punishment on her learners. She always used harsh corporal punishment on boys, resulting in one boy dropping out and changing his life trajectory significantly. She also used corporal punishment with her children. How did this make her feel? How was Alice able to break the cycle of SRGBV and become a change agent? She had remorse when a teacher commented on how some teachers ruined learners' lives. She felt like she wanted to apologize to him. She also regretted her actions with her son. And when he got her to see herself in the mirror, she realized how damaging her actions were. She attended the regional women's caucus and reflected on her actions and her impact on learners. She had significant regret. She began to be an advocate and talking to other teachers, she used her experience in form of stories to encourage teachers to use other methods of discipline. What were some of the underlying systemic level factors that created the environment for Alice to be both a victim and perpetrator? Cultural factors that support a tolerance for violence, for example, caning, beating children. 
cultural and legal factors that allow teachers to abuse learners without repercussions. Lack of reporting systems. Lack of teacher training on SRGBV. Schools and teachers are responsible for ensuring the safety of their students and need to have appropriate mechanisms of holding perpetrators accountable and reporting the incidents to the appropriate authorities. A teacher's responses and actions to a student's report of GBV or sexual harassment can have significant impact and will largely determine a student's ability to cope with a trauma. When the teacher feels the valuable role as an ally, they can have a life-changing impact on a student's lives. Schools should empower teachers with the framework and resources they need to be allies. This includes schools and teachers developing a response network of individuals and organizations to support students who have faced GBV and being clear on how to respond to reports of GBV. In order to provide adequate support to the victim, teachers should follow these guidelines. Respect the student and accept that the problems articulated are real. Be careful not to reject, ignore, ridicule, or embarrass the student. Do not blame the student for the violence. Assure the student that it is not his or her fault. Do not coerce the student for information that they are not willing to disclose. Have patience. Do not hurry or interrupt when the student is talking. Leave the responsibility of decision making to the student after ensuring that he or she understands the consequences of each decision. Do not develop an intimate relationship with the student while counseling them. Do not talk to the student about your own problem. Keep your discussions with the student confidential. If possible, refer students to a trained and reliable source of support, counseling, medical treatment, and or law enforcement. Practice trauma-informed teaching practices. What are some ways that teachers can support the referral process for a student who has experienced SRGBV? Please write your response. Teachers can support the referral process by knowing the points of referral within the school and community, such as school management, local NGOs, health care providers, counseling services, local authorities, chiefs, and police, and the strengths and weaknesses of each. Notify the student's parents, if appropriate, and helping them navigate the response network. Accompanying the students to referral visits to advocate for and support them. And finally, by developing a plan for reporting and referral that is clear, simple, accessible, confidential, and respectful. Violent conflict and crisis situations frequently have negative impacts on gender equality and education systems throughout Africa, with particular challenges for girls as well as boys. Let's look at the impact of violent conflict and crisis on schools and teachers, on boys and on girls. Please take a moment to match the impacts to the target group. Pandemics like COVID-19 pandemic and epidemics like Ebola outbreak can also have severe impacts on schools, teachers, and students. What do you think 
some of the common gendered impacts of COVID-19 have been on school and administrators, on girls and on boys. Please submit your response. Climate change is resulting in more frequent climate events like drought, flooding, and cyclones. Girls and women's limited access to resources makes them more vulnerable to natural disasters. And when it comes to school, if families are struggling economically to cope with climate events or are displaced from their homes, girls are often the first to be pulled out of school. Increasing gender equality and access to education and economic opportunities is an essential part of building community resilience in the face of climate change. Building the leadership capacity of women and girls through gender responsive education is a powerful strategy for prevention, protection, recovery efforts and peace building. Many children suffer from symptoms of trauma from a variety of reasons, such as gender-based violence, abuse, bullying, cumulative stress, and crisis situations like war or natural disasters. Students are often misunderstood and misdiagnosed because it can appear as disruptive behavior, apathy, or attention disorders, and thus go untreated. Teachers may assume that these students are lazy or deviant and unintentionally create harm with punitive discipline. Learning can be very difficult for students who have experienced trauma and it is important for teachers to be able to recognize and adopt their approaches to adequately support the student. Let's review the definitions. Individual trauma. Unique individual trauma of an event or enduring condition in which the individual is exposed to or actually threatened by death, serious injury, or sexual or psychological violation. This occurs either by experiencing, witnessing, or learning about a traumatic event or has first-hand repeated exposure. The individual's coping capacity and or ability to integrate his or her emotional experience is overwhelmed by causing significant distress. Collective trauma. Cultural, historical, insidious, political, or economic trauma that impacts individuals and communities across generations. Consider common practices and political, social and environmental factors that might contribute to individual and collective trauma among students. What are some of the common sources of trauma in your community? Review the symptoms of trauma on page 105 and strategies to support the traumatized learners on page 106 to 108 in your toolkit. Select three symptoms of trauma and write out below how you as a teacher would apply strategies to offer support to the learner displaying those symptoms. When teachers are trauma informed, Students feel safer, are more likely to access support, and benefit from healing services. Knowing how to respond with empathy, compassion, and appropriate behaviors is crucial to creating psycho-emotional safety in the classroom and a gender-responsive space where boys and girls can thrive. Additional resources. Up next, Unit 11, Engaging Stakeholders and Advocacy.